Welcome back to the channel and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys step by step how to make this really awesome satisfying loopable animation in Blender. Now this is going to be part one where I'm going to show you how to do the modeling and how to do the animation. And then in part two we're going to follow up by doing some nice lighting and doing some basic materials and it will render this out as a final animation. So if you think this is something you'd like to learn to do, keep watching. And as always, I'll be uploading my original to Patreon. And you can also join Skillshare for free by looking at my link in the description below and signing up. I have a lot of really cool courses on Skillshare related to Blender. Okay, so when you see open up in Blender, let's select all the default objects and press delete. We're gonna go ahead and go Shift A and under our mesh options, let's add in a cylinder. We're gonna go RX90 and press enter. And then we're gonna go S, Point 0.2, so S.2 point and press enter. And let's just press N to bring up our properties. Let's go to item. And let's just come here to the Z component on the local and let's just make it 1.4 meters like so. Okay, now we have this done. We're just gonna go control A and apply um, all transforms. Okay, so now all of them are reset, but we want the scale, we have the scale that we want. I'm also just gonna go ahead and give this a, uh, let's go ahead and give it a bevel bring that down a little bit and let's give it something like that. I'm going to right click and go shade smooth. Okay, we're now going to go shift A. Let's add in a cube. And with this cube, we're going to tab into edit mode and we're going to go S, Z and then two. So S, Z, two and we're going to press enter. And then in our front view, we're going to go S, X and just make it skinny. So about this much. And then we're gonna go G, Z and bring it till it's just sitting on top of this guy over here, like that. In fact, maybe just a little bit higher, just right there, okay, like that. Then we're gonna tab out. And now what we're gonna do is because the origin point is here in the middle, we can rotate this. So we're gonna do a quick animation. So let's just come to our end frame value. Let's go 90. And let's just come to frame one. And on frame one, we're gonna press I and insert a rotation keyframe. And then we're gonna to come to frame 90. So this, we have our first keyframe here on one. And now in frame 90, we're gonna go and press N again. We're gonna to go to item. And we're to come here to the rotation where we have the, um, the Y. And let's just make that 360. And then hovering over here, let's press I to insert a keyframe. So now on 90, we have that keyframe. So what we're gonna have from frame one to frame zero, we have this, but at the moment it doesn't look like it's just falling. It's too, we have a Bezier curve, but it's not quite what we want. So let's go over here and let's go to our um, graph editor and let's just come and drag this little thing up just so make it a bit more accessible. And we can see here that we have under our, our object transforms, we have the Y, the Euler Y um, rotation here selected. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna select this first handle up here and you can follow the handle and you can see this a little, um, the end of the handle here. And you can see if I pull that here, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna go G and then go X and just pull it along the X to tighten it up like so. And let's grab this bottom handle on the Y. And you can see over here, let's grab the end of that handle over here. And we're gonna go G, X and move it in this way to tighten it up. So we kind of changed the shape here. So we're bringing these, this one in here and we brought this one more this way like so. So now if we actually go and look at animation, we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, it falls a lot faster and then comes back up. Falls a lot faster as it comes down and you can, the more you um, grab these Y handles here and you tighten them up on those um, with the handles, the more that's just gonna speed up like that and swing up to the top and that just looks a lot better. So now let's come here and let's go back to our timeline. We now have the animation for that sussed out. And we wanna to go to frame one. And on frame one, we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in a cylinder. In our front view, we're gonna go R90 and press enter. And then we're gonna go G and Z and move it up like so. And we wanna move it to about here and then we're gonna go S to scale it. And we'll scale it about this much. And what I'm gonna do in fact, I'm gonna just quickly, because I should have done this, I'm just gonna add in another, another cylinder. And I'm gonna to go to the add cylinder settings here and just make it 64 instead. And then I'm gonna get rid of this one here and just move this up. And then go RX90. And then go RY90. And now we have a little bit more um, 
the more faces to work with. So I'm going to scale it down about this big, about this high, more or less. And then I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to get my face select. And I'm just going to select the top, mm, and maybe go with the top two faces like that and go E to extrude them up. Tab back out and now grab this um, monolith here looking thing, this slab. And let's just go to our modifiers. Let's give that a Boolean modifier. Let's click on a little eyedropper and then select this object. And now it's cutting. And let's grab this cutter object and holding in shift, let's grab this slab and go control P. And let's go object and keep the transform. Now all we want to do is we want to grab this cutter object and we could hide it, but then it'll just come up in the render. So we're going to go M to move it. New collection, let's just call it cut or cutter. Go OK. And then let's take this collection and turn it off for the render and for the display. So now we can't see it. Make sure though to give it a um, shade smooth and then hide it. And then grab this thing here, right click and go shade auto smooth. There we go. So now we have that done. And now if we play the animation, you can see that goes along. Beautiful. But at the moment, um, things are still not quite where we want them to be because we still want this thing to go up, not just turn. So how do we do that? So we're going to actually grab this bottom cylinder that we added in here. We're going to go to frame one. In fact, let's select the actual slab holding and shift, select the cylinder down here and go control L and let's go object, keep to transform. We've done that on frame one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab this bottom cylinder on frame one. We're going to go I, we're going to insert our location keyframe. We're going to grab that keyframe, we're going to go Shift D to duplicate and drag it to frame 90. And then we're going to come here and go to frame 45. And on frame 45, we're going to enable auto keying and we're going to go G, Z and move it up. For now, let's just go about this high and then let's just run through our animation. And we can see it's penetrating the floor here or this red line. So let's just go back to frame 45. Let's go G, Z, move it even a bit higher. And let's drag through almost there. Maybe move it a bit higher on 45. Okay, there we go. So now we've done that. So for me, that is a, that's a, that's 4.5. So let's just go 4.5 on the Z for the location. And now let's turn off auto keying. So now we have this and then it comes back. Okay, perfect. So now we just need to make it look cool. So let's go shift A, let's add in another cylinder. R, X, 9, 0, hit enter. S to scale it down about this much and then S, Y and scale it. Let's go about that much and let's give that a bevel. Control A, just apply to scale. And I'm gonna go something like that, bump it up. Right click and go shade smooth. And what we're gonna do on frame one of this cylinder here selected is we're gonna hold and shift and select the slab and go control P and go object, keep transform. So this guy here is gonna be following along with the slab. We also just want to actually grab this and this just looks a bit better. If you just go and grab this face here and go I to inset it a bit and then E to extrude it in like so. And then do the same thing here. Grab this face I to inset it just so it comes down almost touching the cylinder and then E to extrude it in. That just looks a little bit nicer in my opinion, but that's optional. So now we should have this. Okay, it's looking even better. Cool. So now we're just going to embellish it. So now let's go Shift A. Let's add in a torus. Tab into edit mode and go Alt S with all of this active just to slim it down a bit. And then go R, X, 9, 0 and hit enter. And then you're going to go G, Y and move it over. Go to your modifiers, give it a mirror and turn off the X and enable Y. Then you're going to go to frame 45. And you can go G, Z and move it up. And then go S to scale it down. And let's go Alt S, make it a bit skinnier. And we're just going to move it up till it's sitting here like so, kind of around there. Um, in fact, let's make it smaller so it kind of matches the smaller circle here. There we go, the smaller cylinder. So we're going to take it in just a bit. Okay, now we have that. Let's just go in to wireframe, just select the bottom half and go E to extrude and Z and extrude it down into Z until it goes past the floor, something like this, and then go X and delete those faces. So we have this. Now you can tab back out, you can right click and go shade smooth. And let's also give that a subdivision surface modifier. So now we have these guys here, which are kind of like these guides. 
I'm going to maybe just grab them, Alt S, just to fit, thicken them up just a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now let's go back to frame one and let's go Shift A. One more thing we can do with that there's out of rod. So scale down a cylinder. In edit mode, just move it over to the side. So in edit mode, placing it under this cylinder here. And let's give that a mirror. Let's enable the Y and turn off the X. And let's just select the bottom face and go G and then go Z and move it down like so. Maybe even a bit more. Tab back out and now we have these rods. We can right click and go shade auto smooth. And then while we're holding in shift, let's select this smaller cylinder and go control P and go object key transform. So now from frame one onwards, this is gonna follow along. So these are kind of like the pushers that push it up and push it down, okay? And from here, let's go Shift A, let's just add in a circle. Tab into edit mode, S to scale it up, F to fill it. And let's go and give it a solidify. Let's drag this up like so, give it some thickness. And let's give that a bevel. And let's come to the bevel Make it nice and small, bump up the segment count, and let's give this a subdivision surface modifier. Tab back out, and now we're gonna right click and go Shade Smooth, and go Shift D to duplicate and Z, making another one, bringing it down. And with this one, we're gonna go to the Solidify, and let's just bring that way down, like so, to make it even thicker. So now we have a stage. Optionally, you can also just add in a cube, give it a mirror, make it Y. In edit mode, move it over, scale it down. Scale it a little bit on the X, just so you have something like this in here. And then control B or command B, just give it a bevel, like so. And that looks kind of cool. And you can also give that smooth shading. And I think for my original, I also did the same thing. I just actually added in a cylinder and just joined it by going control J. And then I just brought that in like this. But at this point, it's just extra decorations. Like you don't have to do this. But I added it in here like this. And then just gave it like an extra bit of detail like that. But that's something you can do if you, you choose to do it. But that just makes it look really nice. So now we have this. You can see it's really come together, but we do need to grab I think these guys here and just move all of them down a little bit so it's not intersecting with our so if you come to frame one it's none of it should be intersecting with our um, slab here that is turning up and down so there we have that so now we're gonna get to the fun part we can now go shift a add in a UV sphere and let's give it a subdivision surface modifier right click and go shade smooth and now let's come here dragging for our timeline and let's wait till this slab kind of falls down at almost a 45 degree angle let's go g and move our ball over here and go s to scale it down and for me i might just cycle through it maybe about here maybe something like that and i'm just going to move my sphere it might not be exact same position as mine for you but Make sure you scale it, just so it's just just fitting in there, like that. Okay, and then you're going to tab into edit mode, and you're just going to select an edge here, Shift D to duplicate, S to scale, and then E to extrude, and Z, and just extrude it down. So you have this big lollipop, and tab back out. And now what we can do is we can drag through even further. Let's come to about here. And let's go in wireframe and go Shift D to duplicate and let's put this one over here. So it's kind of sitting right in the middle here like that. So now what we should be able to do is go to frame one, hit the space bar and now this is gonna loop. And it shouldn't be um, intersecting with these two spheres. It should just be f seamlessly like just slapping through them like that. So at this point, we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a camera. And um, you can press zero to go into your camera, G, middle mouse button to zoom out. 
I'm going to double tap R just to rotate my camera up. And at this point, I'm going to rotate my camera to get a angle and pose that I think looks good. Now this is going to be relative because obviously we all have different ideas about, you know, how we like to pose things. So for me, this is kind of the pose I like. I'm going to go with focal length of 90 on my camera and I'm going to zoom a little bit back like this. I think that looks really cool. And for me personally, I'm gonna to come to frame one. I'm gonna hit I with my camera selected, add in a location and a rotation, and it grab that shift D to duplicate it and drag it to 90. And then I'm gonna just scrub through my animation, enable auto keying, and then I'll just rotate my camera just to follow around and look at what's happening here, just so it kind of looks like the camera's following along. But that's optional. You don't have to add camera animation. That's just what I'm choosing to do like that. Just that little up and down like that. As long as it's loopable and the first and last keyframe are the same. One more thing, let's go Shift A, let's just add in a circle. Tab into edit mode, go S to scale it nice and big. And let's go to our vertex select option, G, Z, move it all down. And then E to extrude and Z, extrude it up. And then our top orthographic, go into wireframe and just select all of these faces here, where the camera is and go X and delete faces, maybe even a little bit more like that. Just so we have like this nice background now, I'm gonna tab back out, right click and go shade smooth. So now we have a background that we can also um, add a material to later. Okay. Okay, so that has been part one on how to do the modeling and how to do the animation. In part two, I'm gonna be showing you how we can add some nice lighting and some nice materials and how we're gonna render this out as a final animation. Keep in mind that my final result or my original will be on Patreon. You can find all of that in the description below.